The cold embrace the medical machine took Cooler away for many hours. He almost lost the sense of time being submerged in the healing solution. Obviously, the initial lack of limbs and some parts of his head weren't exactly helping with his weakened state, but this whole thing was almost relaxing. He hoped that his enemies wouldn't try to seize an opportunity, perhaps, and attack while he was at his most vulnerable. Not that he would know about many of them still being active anyway, but he wouldn't put it past the likes of Alec to try and sabotage his rebirth. The dreams that he had were chaotic and fragmented, as it was his mind trying to tell him something. Memories of his past battles, the one that scarred him the most with Son Goku in his duel against Cell. But they were different, as he could view them from multiple angles, which was not always flattering, as it only emphasized mistakes that he had made. There were also duels and fights that he didn't remember before, but could now. Ones against his own brother and father, with them being at the height of their power and influence, and him struggling to keep up due to his non-mutant nature. This had been annoying, as it felt like almost a nightmare. And cooler, the Emperor of the Universe, should not have those. Not now, at least. There was also a vivid dream of something else, a chaotic essence that he only heard about from his father's warning. The primordial being known as Majin Buu destroyed everything he had built. That one felt particularly real, and no matter how hard he tried, he could not shake off that sensation all so easily. He could kind of hear the real world as he was dreaming, his scientists stressing out over him being restless in his sleep, and Kikono yelling at them constantly. He wanted to calm them down with one harsh word, but it felt as if he was unable to. He didn't have a voice, and this was getting infuriating. How long was this going to last? He also wasn't sure if the procedure was working or not, because his entire body felt like it was numb. He started to slowly regret his decision about this procedure. Maybe he should just try and find out his place in the pecking order for real and settle there. Perhaps the universe itself placed restrictions on him. He couldn't go any further. No. These were the words of a weak fool, sleep-induced musings of a madman. He was the heir of the Cold Force. He had to remember that. He was meant to evolve one way or another. This couldn't be painless. It couldn't be simple. Getting scars at the height of your power was interesting, but true. Deep change could be achieved through facing his failures and weaknesses. Something that both his brother and father failed to realize, but he would. It became so clear to him right now that he had to face his weaknesses head on before he could gain any further strength. He clenched his fist, realizing only after a short while that when he entered the machine, he was missing a specific arm. That arm, yes, it was working. He had his arm back. For a moment, he thought that Gamry had tried to poison him with that kelp. That that old turtle kappa man thing would have had the last laugh after all. But he also realized that his scientists had run numerous tests before they even let him in and had found no foul play. It would be unwise for him to underestimate his own assets because he'd be underestimating himself. He was curious about Alex's game in all of this. He certainly had a plan for giving him this information. He wasn't really hesitant about it. So, what was that heater playing at? Hmm? After all what felt like an eternity, his eye opened, as everything around him was blurry due to the contents of the tank. He made sure that all his underlings were at a safe distance from his pod. He didn't really want to damage them, and he even felt some kind of gratitude toward them for keeping him safe as he was busy recovering. But admittedly, he was in the mood for a little bit of a dramatic time, because as he awoke, the glass promptly shattered, 
alarming everyone in the room. Kula took a few shaky steps on the wet, sodden floor, with Salsa coming toward him and catching him before he collapsed. <laughs> Monsieur Kuller, is everything all right? The Emperor removed his breathing mask and looked around. The light was stinging. Feels adequate. How long was I in there? Several standard weeks, Monsieur. Kula grimaced. That was long for his liking, but necessary. Very well. Were there any interruptions while I was out? He freed himself from Salza's embrace and tried to look tall and mighty. Just the one, Kikano saluted, looking very proud of himself. There was an attempt to try and hack our systems, but we stopped it dead in its tracks. Someone tried to steal some of our precious data and override the process, stopping you from recovering and being reborn. Sadly, they hadn't left anything trackable, but we stopped them from harming you, my lord. Kula's face changed into a manic smile. I know very well who that could be. <laughs> Perfect. As soon as I am ready, I think I'll be ready to stretch out these reborn limbs. Oh, ho, 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 he was back. Elek was trying to look cool, calm, collected. He knew that he was coming, but there'd be no way that he would suspect him. They covered their tracks well. This time, the Emperor didn't even wait for the doors to have been opened for him, as he forcefully removed part of said door. M uh, my lord, oh, what an unexpected, oh, spare me. That was almost smart of you. Sadly, Kikuno may be a bumbling, loudmouth fool, but surprisingly, he is a competent, bumbling, loudmouthed fool. He stepped up closer to Elect's throne, looking mighty, only to be blocked once again by gas. And a pretty loyal one, he said over the head of the shortest of the heaters. I do not understand, my lord. Elect gave him his trademark smile. Didn't we give you the location of the kelp? And, uh, and look at you, uh, you are fully organic again. This is a momentous occasion for us all, we should celebrate. I can drum up a feast if you want. I have wondered what it is you've truly wanted all these years, Elek. The solution, the technology, or my weakness. But I guess it has to have been all three. You are all about information. Clearly, I have no idea what you're talking about, my lord. I was awaiting your return as the loyal subject I am. Elek had composed himself at this point but he was still worried about any sudden movements. Which one is your favorite? He looked at the other siblings. I don't understand. Kula formed a small keyboard in his hand. Is it the small one? Oh, please tell me it's the small one. He aimed the orb at Gas, who suddenly paled. I assure you, I, I don't know anything, my lord. Are you feeling all right after the procedure? I, I, I can understand if you are feeling a little woozy, and uh, what about the big oaf? Cooler changed his target to be oil and elbowed Gas who tried to strike him, but he was easily put to the ground. The largest of the heaters started to sweat. Please, my lord, let's talk like civil beings. I assure you that you haven't heard any lies from me. G gas Maki approached her brother and helped him up. The girl. Oh, of course, it's the girl. It's always the girl. My lord, if you're angry, we cannot do anything about that, but I assure you, we don't have anything to hide. Elex seemed almost too comfortable, but it also gave Kula the answers that he had looked for. He extinguished the blast. Well, I guess I was too hasty in my presumptions. Still, Elek, I have my eye on you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have another suspect to suss out. But as he walked away, he looked over his shoulder at the expression of the three siblings. There were no other suspects, you see, my friends, but the seed had been planted amongst them. <gasps> oh, he liked some discord. How could you do nothing after this maniac aimed at us? You didn't even seem at all worried. 
Maki was particularly yelling at her brother. Calm down, sister. If we had admitted it, you would have killed all of us. I had to try and act cool. Of course, all three of you are of the utmost importance to me. Or didn't you see? As I suspected, he is erratic. We can use that to our advantage. Gas tried to seem convinced by that. But he... he can be back. Yes, Gas, he can. That's why we are all counting on you. That's why we are assembling the expedition. The shortest of the siblings nodded, trying not to let the incident shake his faith in his elder brother. You're sending him alone with some moose to that terrible place? What was it even called? Maki was trying her best to calm down. Oh, the big getaster, my sister. And if my sources are correct, within it, we can find power that would be enough for us to claim Kula's throne for ourselves. Oil scratched his stomach. Oh, uh, what if he finds out, bro? Elek laughed. <laughs> Don't you worry. I have some news that will catch his attention. Elek looked at his data pad. It's about as precious earth. Am I hearing this correctly? Barbady the Wizard is not only in cahoots with the demon realm Prince Debora, but that also heading towards Earth. Kula adjusted his position in his hover chair. As well as two unidentified Kaioshins, yes, my lord. Salsa nodded. Our sources have confirmed that, absolutely. So, it seems like Lek is trying to buy my favor. Or distract me. What are we thinking, fellows? Kula looked at his council. Why not both, my lord? This one always liked killing multiple birds with one stone. Berry Blue smirked. That is true, the Emperor nodded. Should I take the bait? I've always wanted to deal with the Demon Prince himself. Is that wise, my lord? We might be needing you up here. Kula crossed his arms. You have grown to be pretty formidable and competent on your own, Souser. Besides, maybe then Elek would make a move that would oust him as a traitor much quicker than I would like, so I can remove him without any further repercussion. With all the respect in the galaxy, Monsieur Kula, why can't you just kill him here and now? Good question. First, he still has his uses. Second, the Empire is constantly evolving. We need to show that we are fair. The punishment comes after the proven crime, not before. This course of action will ensure moral loyalty from others rather than, pardon my phrasing, doing a freezer. <laughs> that is sound logic, my lord. Saza didn't like the answer that much, but he did like the freezer joke. He did understand eventually. I think our lord is a little bit excited to show the Saiyans his newfound power, isn't he? Berry Blue was chuckling at this. I am not that vain, Berry Blue. This is not important. Earth is part of my empire, and I would love to remove a demon prince from harassing my domain. That is all. <laughs> no one believed that, of course, but Kula didn't really care to try and convince them at this time. The truth of the matter was the fact that his dream in the Takba tank about Margin Boo was something that truly worried him. He remembered the tale of Barbadi's creator, Bibidi, being able to control the creature it was terrifying. Magic and all. Was that premonition he saw prophetic? A few years ago, he would have taken this as a foolish superstition. He would have not thought anything of it, but as of right now, nothing surprised him all that much. He could realistically believe anything. So, I will try to keep the news about my journey to Earth relatively low, but enough for Elect to pick up on it, thinking that I have taken his bait. So, I think we'll get what we want. I will deal with Deborah and I will return post haste, while you all monitor your findings. Will you be departing right away, my lord? Should I prepare your shuttle? Kikano seemed eager to please, but his leader just smiled slightly. Actually, there is one more thing I would like to do that I have to do. Once again, he was standing there, alone in the middle of the rocky wasteland. But this time his body felt lighter as if a massive portion of his worries had been taken away. He took a deep, long breath. There was no faulty technology limiting him anymore. The only thing that could stop him was his own body that he had full control of. He allowed the power to flow through it, as in his mind, he was remembering his encounters with Son Goku, Vegeta, 
and sell. Kula didn't really know about the inner machinations of image training, but what he was doing was pretty darn close to it right now. He started to grow, first into his fifth form. It felt very liberating not to feel those mechanical bits reassembling and hindering his performance and progression. He felt the spikes on his bio-armor extending and becoming one with his body, the mask shuttering over his face. Where would he go next from that, he thought. He grew even taller, but wanted to appear slightly leaner. His massive height kept him an easier target, so at least the frame could be a little bit thinner, svelter. The horns, they were no longer needed, but he had a replacement for those. He felt their weight as they slowly grew from his head, going all the way down his back. In a way, it was sort of like simplifying the third form into the fourth, just not as extreme. He stood there like a titanic entity, with his additional head protrusions, almost hair-like, wavering ever so slightly in the breeze, with the barbs ending them making a pleasant sound in the wind. What would he call them? Head tails? Tentacles? Whips? You'll think about that later. But still, the power in his body right now felt incredible, as he was sure that he would have dominated Perfect Cell right now. But sadly, the bio-android was no longer there. Fortunately, the alternatives were there. The Demon Prince, ooh, he felt like a suitable test object right now. And when he destroyed him, well, he really hoped that Song Gohan had kept up his promise since they had last seen each other. Because finally, after all these years, his legacy had a real chance to triumph over a Saiyan. And if he truly triumphed over said Saiyan, he could decide the fate of their entire race once more. He would not be beholden to them anymore. Cooler didn't want to admit this to himself, but the dilemma would be real this time. He finally felt alive. No, not just alive, reborn. And that's where we're going to be leaving things for right now.